I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Become a channel member today to get access to some really cool perks. The link is in the video description. Two men driving near Kitimat at William Creek Flats reported they encountered a strange creature in about 1980. A ground fog covered the swampy area, and as they came around a slight bend, they saw what they thought was a man waving his arms on the roadside. Thinking someone had driven off the road and needed help, they pulled off onto the shoulder and stopped on the same side of the waving figure, which was at a distance of several car lengths. They then saw that it was not a person. It was a very tall, hair-covered, human-like creature standing in the water at the foot of a grade that faced the highway. The creature's eyes and mouth opened wide in fright. It threw its head back, crossed its arms over the front of its head as if to be warding off a blow from a club, and then turned and dashed into the swamp. The men watched it go through waist-deep holes in the swamp until it disappeared in the fog. The men said the creature's face was covered with hair, much the same as a full beard would on a man. They said its facial features were human-like, not like that of a chimp or an ape. A motorist reported seeing a strange creature after stopping at a rest area at night near Squamish in November 1981. He said his headlights illuminated the area across a small lake where the creature was seen crouched by the water. The motorist thought it was a bear, but it stood upright and walked into the bush on two legs, with arms swaying and taking rather long strides. Jim Wallington reported that he saw a Sasquatch about two miles from Caslo at about 11.15 p.m. during 1981. Wallington was driving into town when the creature crossed the road close to his car. It was definitely walking on two legs. Vance Webster, age 13, Tony Grubber, 9, and Larry Lambert, 12, reported that they saw an unusual creature near Sanichton on January 30, 1982. The boys were playing in a patch of woods when they encountered the oddity, which they described as 10 feet tall with hairy arms and legs. They ran from the area and reported what they had seen to the police, who did not investigate the incident. John Green was contacted, and he interviewed the boys and went to the scene of the incident. The boys related that they were investigating a growling they had heard. Webster first saw clearly an arm and a leg of a creature as it stepped out from behind trees onto the trail. When it was in full view, all of the boys saw it and ran. Larry Lambert said the creature came toward them before they ran away. The heights the boys provided were closer to 8 feet than 10. Webster said the creature was grayish black, Lambert that it was dark brown. Both boys independently pointed out the same exact location where the creature was seen. Robert Harrison and Frank Meir reported seeing a probable Sasquatch near Fernie at about 6 p.m. on June 10, 1982. The men were traveling in their truck along a dirt forestry road about 10 miles north of Fernie. Both men were fishermen and hunters. They came around a bend and saw a large, hair-covered creature standing on two legs in the middle of the road facing the left side of the road. As the truck approached, the creature turned its head and looked at the oncoming vehicle for about two seconds then turned and started running down the road ahead. The men chased the creature for a brief time, and when they got closer, it leapt off the road to the left and disappeared in the trees. The men stopped at the place where the creature left the road and got out of their truck to see if they could spot the oddity again, but it was nowhere in sight. They found skid marks nine feet down the embankment, which they believed were caused when the creature's feet touched down. On this point, Harrison remarked, It was an incredible leap. I don't think a man could leap like that. The men searched around for actual footprints, but didn't find any. Harrison described the creature as being just over six feet tall and covered with short, reddish-brown hair. The face and hands were not hair-covered. The skin was dark color, either dark gray or black. They contemplated informing the RCMP of the sighting, but decided against doing so. Frances Rand reported that she saw a Sasquatch from a train as it traveled through Glacier National Park near Golden on June 16, 1982. She wrote the following letter to Dr. Vladimir Markotik. I saw a Sasquatch on June 16, 1982 at about 1.30 p.m. from a moving train on my way home to Calgary from Vancouver. 
The incident was in Glacier National Park, British Columbia, between Revelstoke and Golden. The Sasquatch was about 75 feet at the edge of a dense forest, sitting on a fallen log. I could see its left side. He seemed to be looking at the back of the train, which, by the way, was very slow in that particular spot. The Sasquatch was very tall and very lean. I would say seven feet or more. I remember thinking that he was much taller than my son-in-law, who is six feet three inches and also very lean. He was covered with short, dark brown fur that resembled borg lining used in winter wear. I noted the shape of its head because I marveled at the roundness of it. That fact eliminated a lot of wild game. I didn't see any ears. He looked like a very tall human all covered with fur. His left hand was up to his face as if he was eating something. His left leg was bent at a 90-degree angle. His right one was extended. I saw him for four to five seconds only, but what I saw was a Sasquatch. It could not have been anything else. Of that, I am firmly convinced. I refer to the Sasquatch as a he, as I did not see any breasts. Four children playing in the yard of a farmhouse near Hazleton reported they saw a Sasquatch staring at them from nearby bushes in July 1983. It appeared to be about seven feet tall and very broad. It didn't make any sound or any movements. It just stood there watching the children. The creature had caused some commotion with farm geese and caused the family's dog to run under the house. One of the children ran into the house and told his father and grandmother what was happening, and they came out onto the porch. The father was shocked to see the creature and ordered all the children into the house. When one of the children asked his grandmother what it was, she simply said, Oh, it's probably a Bigfoot, and went into the house without a second look. In later years, one of the children remarked that he did not feel frightened and thought that the creature was just curious about all of the children laughing and playing, and then went on his way. A young men's Christian association camp leader, assistant, and nine boys reported a strange experience near Gibson's during the summer of 1983. As they hiked, they saw a tall black figure in the distance that appeared and disappeared in the bush. From what could be seen, its head was proportional to its body, but it did not have a neck. As the group proceeded, they found large footprints where the figure had been and tree branches broken off at the eight or nine foot level. The camp leader became worried and wanted to turn back, but it was too late to make it back to their home base before nightfall. The group therefore made camp almost at the summit of Tetrahydrin Ridge, that night, they heard terrifying roars. The camp leader said the following, We banked the campfire and began to enter our tent when the first of many roars, five to ten, echoed off the surrounding mountainsides. It was unlike anything I've ever heard before or since, and the power behind them was disturbing. The sound seemed to be generated effortlessly. We had to reassure the boys many times and slept by the campfire, sitting back to back, debating the risk of hiking down in the dark. Finally, the sound stopped, and although we thought we heard something in the bush about 200 meters below us, the rest of the longest night I have ever experienced came to an end. They broke camp after breakfast and headed back to home base. Nothing was seen or heard during the hike back. Ray Norbert, a hunter, reported that he saw a Sasquatch near Parksville in the fall of 1983. Norbert was hunting late in the season at dusk, but still with good visibility. He was in a meadow east of the island highway when he heard a crashing in the forest on the far side of the meadow. He then saw the creature come out and walk along the fence line about a hundred yards away. The creature traveled the length of the field, walking like a man, and re-entered the forest at the end of the field. It was dark in color and twice as high as the fence posts, about eight to nine feet tall. He said he would have fired if he were sure the creature was not a man. Gary Hertig reported that he saw an unusual creature near Nanaimo in August 1983. He and some friends were shooting at apples with pellet guns in an area that was once a park or zoo of some sort. Hertig walked away from the others by himself and was leaning against a tree when he saw something move about 12 feet up in another tree. He watched in that direction and a creature of some sort turned and looked toward him. It was a dark, hairy thing with big eyes, no hair around them, and a flat face. He estimated the creature was about 50 to 100 feet away. 
As he continued watching, the creature jumped down from the tree, knocking off a branch as it fell, and ran into the woods. Hertig was frightened and also left the spot. He said that the creature's size was too big for a bear, and its face totally unbear-like. He thinks the creature had been watching the other boys as he approached from behind. A boy stated that he found two sets of human-like bear footprints in the snow on Dilworth Mountain during March 1984. He was out hiking with his dog at the time. One set of prints was very large, around 17 inches, and the other set was about 10 inches long. Both sets of prints appeared to have come from the direction of a residential area. They crossed an open field and then proceeded uphill toward a more forested area. The boy stated that from where he first saw the tracks, they continued on for about 150 yards before going into the tree line. His dog reacted to the prints and followed them. The boy called his dog back and left the area. Bill Bedry of Burnaby and friend Gordon Fland reported that they saw and photographed a Sasquatch in the Agassiz area on August 20th, 1984. The pair first saw the creature at a distance of about 115 to 145 feet in a gravel pit. The creature was trying to climb out of the pit and get into the woods. They got within about 98 feet of the oddity. Bedry said it looked hairy and everything else and made one hell of a racket. He said it was well over six feet tall and looked to weigh between three and four hundred pounds. It stayed on its hind legs at all times. He described the sound as a big howling scream that scared the hell out of them. He said it was definitely not a bear. As the creature kept sliding downward on loose gravel, Bedry snapped three photographs. It eventually got out of the pit and disappeared from view. Some men and several dogs went to the site on August 26th and found a footprint and a broken branch nearby. Bedry said one photograph showed the creature's face, the other two are profiles. Steve Bosch, a Sun reporter, saw the photographs and said the shots are of an indistinct dark object against a dark background. A Sasquatch researcher, probably René de Hinden, also looked at the photographs and said they were not conclusive. Bedry said, I kind of believe in Sasquatches now because of what I saw is some kind of creature. Well, like I said, it wasn't any bear, and I've never seen anything like that before. Glenn Stewart reported to the RCMP that an unusual animal had attacked his car near Burns Lake on July 30, 1985. Stewart's wife was with him at the time. Stewart told Conservation Officer Peter Stent that a large, very tall, hairy creature came out of the woods and ran alongside his station wagon for a short distance at 30 miles an hour. It was screaming and at one point struck the car two or three times. The officer didn't find any marks on the car that appeared to have been made by an animal. A motorist traveling to Kelowna reported that he saw a large, man-like animal cross the highway near Revelstoke between 6 and 7 p.m. in July 1985. He saw the creature at a distance of about 300 to 400 feet. It came up the side of the road ditch and appeared to look both ways on the highway to ensure no cars were coming. As it crossed, it looked straight at the motorist, who estimated that it was 8 to 9 feet tall. It had very big shoulders, long arms, and was covered in orange-brown hair. Its weight was estimated at between 7 and 800 pounds. It took long steps, 6 or 7, in crossing the highway and walked with a stooped posture. The motorist stopped and inspected the area where it was last seen. He could still see the creature moving away through the trees. He said he was going to wave some people down, but the creature was moving too fast, and just too many trees, it was gone. A man who was fishing near Queen Charlotte City on the Hona River reported that he saw a deer struck down and carried off by a Sasquatch in 1985. The man saw what appeared to be a very tame deer come out of the woods and drink from the river right by where he was fishing. Suddenly, a rock flew out from the trees, striking and knocking down the deer. A tall, hair-covered, human-like creature immediately emerged from the woods, threw the deer over its shoulder, and dashed back into the woods. The man quickly left the area. John Duthie and his wife saw an unusual creature near Lone Butte in April 1986. The couple had ascended a hill to look at the view. Down below, they could see a small section of curved road on which a large, dark, 
brown and black mottled, very heavy creature was walking erect. It did not have a snout. It turned off the road and into the trees. Later, Duthy returned with a friend who knew what part of the road was in sight from the hill. The friend stayed on the road and Duthy went back on the hill, enabling him to make a size comparison between the creature he saw and his friend. He estimated that the creature was about eight feet tall. They had a dog that followed a scent through the trees, leading to a trail of crushed old vegetation, reeds and so forth. This trail led to a small swampy lake, a distance of about 200 yards. At this point, whatever had made the trail apparently swam off. An eight-year-old boy said he saw a gorilla near Golden in the spring of 1986. The boy was traveling with his father in their truck on the Trans-Canada Highway. At about 1.30 a.m., the father felt fatigued, so pulled off the highway and parked in a quiet spot to get a little rest. He had no sooner turned off the truck's motor when his son grabbed him in a state of panic and begged him to get out of there. The boy was in such a state that his father thought it best to simply drive away. A little later, after the boy had cooled down, his father asked him what was the problem. The boy said, A gorilla, Dad. It was a gorilla. It was coming up to the truck. The boy had looked out of the window and saw the creature approaching. He thinks it actually came up and leaned on the truck. He was absolutely positive that it was walking on two legs. Thomas Steenberg interviewed the boy about six years after the incident and was somewhat impressed with his story. At no time did the boy mention the word Sasquatch or Bigfoot. He simply confirmed that what he saw looked like a gorilla. Adam Harvey reported seeing a Sasquatch near Harrison Hot Springs at Deer Lake on May 21, 1986 in Sasquatch Provincial Park. He and Lucas Gronfeld had camped next to a water pump that was by a big hill and a meadow. At 3 a.m., Gronfeld saw someone, thought it was a person, look into their tent. Harvey got up, went outside, and shone a flashlight downhill from their position. He saw a brown creature, seven to eight feet tall, standing upright. He held the flashlight on it and watched it run off, jumping over a four-foot stump and disappearing from view. He said it was running very fast and noticed its hair looked stiff. Its nose was flat and its eyes appeared greenish-yellow. Two boys hiking up a mountain trail near Gibson's reported they saw a strange creature at about 11 a.m. on June 15, 1986. They described it as black in color and noted that its back touched the branch of a tree. It walked off into the bush and the boys went to where it had been. They smelled an odor like a wet dog and judging by the height of the tree branch and judging by the height of the tree branch the creature had brushed, they said it must have been 9 to 10 feet tall. The boy saw a trail that the creature had made in the bush and followed it to a point under some cedar trees. They saw huckleberry bush leaves on the ground that were shaped into what they think was a bed. A man reported he saw an unusual creature near Colmont in early July 1986. On his way down to a local creek, he saw something on the roof of an abandoned cabin about a hundred feet away. It was hunched over or squatting. The resident stated, it was big and it was light brown, about the color of a cinnamon bear. That's what I thought it was at first. Then it stood up and it wasn't a bear. As the creature was on the far side of the roof, the lower part of its legs were not visible, thus its full height was difficult to determine. The resident was able to see its face and described it as follows. The face was sort of a blackish color and there wasn't much hair on the face. I remember it had a large mouth, but the mouth was closed. I didn't see the color of the eyes. It had no nose that I could see, looked like two holes where the nostrils should be. He noted that the hair on its head was not much longer than that on the rest of its body, and it was the same color as the other hair. The head itself was sort of pointed, not real pointed like a gorilla, but it had more of a point than a human. The point was sort of in the middle of the skull, not at the rear like a gorilla or ape. He also noticed breasts that were very long and droopy, indicating to him that the creature was without doubt a female. The breasts were covered in hair the same color as on the rest of its body. The creature's arms were not overly long for the body. They looked pretty much like a human. However, he pointed out that they were very muscular. As to its hands, the hands were about level with the knees, not hanging below the knees like a gorilla or orangutan. The full time the creature was observed was about five to ten seconds. It simply stood there, looking toward the resident, then jumped off the roof and ran into the bush. 
He checked behind the cabin to see if there were any footprints where the creature had jumped down, but the ground was very hard, so nothing was seen. Remarkably, a relative of the resident stated that he saw what was likely the same creature down by the same old cabin on July 26, 1986. We do not have details on this incident. Bobby and Kathy Harris, a vacationing elderly couple, reported seeing a Sasquatch while fishing near Chilliwack along the Chilliwack River in August 1986. Bobby had just returned to the river after hanging his catch of about eight fish on a tree near their camper. He had not finished his first cast when Kathy cried out in alarm and pointed back to the tree. Bobby looked in stunned silence, still holding his fishing pole halfway through a cast. To the couple's astonishment, a dark gray, hair-covered creature walking on two legs grabbed the fish from the tree and walked off through the bush. It crossed a nearby road and disappeared into the forest on the other side. Bobby and Kathy stood and stared like statues. Finally, Kathy broke the silence. What in the hell was that? she exclaimed. That was a Bigfoot, and I still don't believe it, Bobby replied. The Harrises weren't the only witnesses to the unusual theft. At least two other campers elsewhere in the campsite saw what happened and rushed up to the Harrises' camper. The creature was not seen again, and the hardy Harris couple recovered from the incident. They stayed on for another two days and happily replaced the stolen stash with a fresh catch. After hearing of the incident from one of the other witnesses who had left the day after the encounter, researcher Thomas Steenberg arrived at the site just as the Harris couple was pulling out. He was able to talk to them briefly and got a first-hand account of the incident. Steenberg had a good look around the campsite and decided to venture into the forest across the road where the creature disappeared, directly behind the campsite. Along a small creek that flows into the river, he found a line of footprints. The best prints were right beside the creek, were up to 18 inches long. The line of prints headed through a grassy clearing and disappeared at a rock slide area. In all, 112 footprint impressions were counted, many just recognizable because of the hard ground. The best prints were photographed and a cast was made of them. Workers on an oil rig near Dawson Creek reported that they saw an unusual creature on the night of March 14, 1987. Miles Jack first saw the creature between 50 and 75 yards. It was in a kneeling position and then suddenly stood upright. Other men then saw it and all said that it looked about 7 to 8 feet tall and weighed between 350 to 400 pounds. Jack said that it looked more like a man than an animal. Jack then called to his buddy Brian to have a look, and as he did, he clearly saw the creature run off, still upright into the bush. Jack said it took huge steps, twice those of the average man. It then circled the clearing around the oil rig, peering intermittently at the men as it did so. It twice crossed the unpaved access road that ran through the camp. Four of the seven crew members who got a good look at the creature were outdoorsmen and hunters. They all dismissed any chance of it being a bear. Province newspaper reporter Anne Reese and a photographer, Les Bazo, were in Dawson Creek at the time. Upon hearing of the sighting, they went out the next day and investigated the incident. The creature's footprints were clearly visible in the powdery snow. They measured about 15 inches long and were about 54 inches apart. Where the creature had been seen kneeling, there was a V-shaped marking which could have been where its knees touched the ground. Behind this marking, there were two indents, possibly made by its toes. When interviewed by the press, Miles Jack stated, I never imagined I'd see anything like that in my lifetime. Brian added, I don't care whether people believe me or not. I saw what I saw. He tried to follow the tracks and stated that sometimes they would head into the bush and then just stop. No more tracks. He never did find a trail he could follow for any distance. A motorist traveling with a friend and his small daughter reported that they spotted a man-like creature in the Fort Nelson region on April 13, 1987. The oddity was spotted beside the highway between 10 and 11 a.m. at a distance of between 200 and 300 yards. The motorist said the creature was dark, appeared to be about 8 feet tall, and looked to weigh over 500 pounds. It took a few large steps and quickly disappeared into the bush. He said, we call it Nagani which means Bushman in the Dene language. Agnes Perkins and Charlotte White 
are sure that they saw a Sasquatch near Golden at Rogers Pass during August 1987. The women saw what they thought was a man on the roadside about 800 yards ahead. As they got closer, they saw that it was a seven-foot-tall creature covered in black hair. As they continued to approach the oddity, it suddenly turned right and climbed up the steep hillside. It stayed on two legs all the time, Perkins said. The women did not stop. Perkins kept her eyes on the road, and White watched the creature until it entered a thick growth of lodgepole pines high up on the hill. Perkins pointed out that she was impressed with distance the creature covered as the car went by. Joseph Verhoveny reported that he saw a Sasquatch picking berries at the mouth of the Silver River on the east side of Harrison Lake at 4 or 5 p.m. on July 5, 1988. Verhoveny had gone into the area to get berries, and it was in this process that he saw the creature. He stated he was about 100 feet from the oddity and observed it eating berries. It drew a branch to its mouth and ate just the ripe berries. As it did not destroy the berry bush in the process, Verhoeven he got the impression that the creature was very intelligent. He estimated the creature was over six feet tall. It stood on two feet and was covered in hair. He observed it for about three minutes. The creature turned and looked at Verhoeven, stepped backwards for a few feet, and then turned and ran away. After it was gone, Verhoeven said he sensed a sulfuric odor, like something rotten. He did check for footprints, but they were only slightly visible in the ground debris. A motorist and his friend reported seeing a strange upright walking creature near Wycliffe on Highway 95 at about 10.30 p.m. on August 24, 1988. They saw the creature come out of the trees on the left side of the road and cross the road in front of their car. It simply crossed at a fast walking pace and disappeared into the trees on the other side of the road. One of the men described the creature as covered in black hair and being very large. He said it was too tall to have been a man. This report was given to Thomas Steenberg by one of the men. Steenberg asked him if he would submit to a detailed interview, but he declined as he had a reputation as a no-nonsense sort of guy and didn't want it getting out that he saw a Sasquatch. A motorist reported that he saw a strange creature in the Wass area along the Nimkish River on September 8, 1988. He was traveling with his three sons and had stopped at a rest facility. They heard the rustling of grouse behind the outhouse and decided to flush them out to get a look at them. The father sent his sons into the bush to flush the birds towards him and then proceeded down a trail and took a position to view the birds. As he waited, he noticed that what he thought was one of his sons standing and leaning against a tree with his back to him, but he was in the wrong place. He shouted at the boy asking why he was there and got the surprise of his life. What was standing by the tree turned around and revealed itself to be a hair-covered creature, dark brown or black in color, with wide shoulders. The long hair on its neck and shoulders flew straight outward. It simply walked off with a graceful stride, as if it were very fit. The boy assumed to be in the wrong place, shouted back to his father from exactly where he should have been. The father quickly ordered his boys back to their vehicle and left the area immediately. Dr. John Bindernagel, a wildlife biologist, and his wife Joan found Sasquatch tracks in Strathcona Provincial Park during October 1988. The tracks were found in two muddy places on a hiking trail. They measured about 15 inches long. The best track was partially overprinted by a hiker's boot sole. He had been interested in the Sasquatch issue since 1963 and started research in B.C. in 1975. Betty Unger reported a Sasquatch sighting near Harrison Hot Springs on a road in Hemlock Valley at about 4 p.m. during the spring of 1989. She was driving with her nine-year-old grandson, Dallas Yellowfly, and they both saw the creature in the roadside ditch. It was ascending the steep bank below the road. Unger thought it was a small black bear. She stopped her car to watch it as it reached the road, stood erect, and flexed its back. She said that it looked very human-like, but covered in dark brown hair. She estimated that it was less than six feet tall. The creature crossed the road diagonally towards the car, coming within about 30 feet. It paused in its passage, looked at both Unger and her grandson, then jumped up onto the bank above the road on the other side. It looked back down at them for a moment and then continued up the bank and disappeared into the trees. Unger said that its movements were faster than a human could move. 
She described its face as dark with little hair. She said she could clearly see its facial expression, muscle movement, and eye movement. Walter Patrick reported finding strange footprints near Fort St. James along the Stewart River in September 1989. Patrick, a foreman of a salmon enhancement program, found eight prints about 11 inches long and slightly wider than a human foot in one location, then two sets of the same type of prints but smaller behind a clump of bushes. The prints at the first location sank about two inches into the ground and had pointed toes. The smaller toes inclined sharply from the big toe. The arch area was curved and the inside heel portion seemed to have a strange bump with a type of spur jutted out from the back heel. There were no signs of claws. Patrick speculated that a large creature had two smaller ones along but kept them at a distance. A group of high school students sleeping out on a beach near Seashelt said something attacked them in the night during the 1980s. Around midnight, they were awakened by loud animal sounds and the sound of breaking branches. This was immediately followed by a barrage of sticks and small logs from the adjacent forest. The terrified students ran off, abandoning their sleeping bags and other equipment. The next day, they went back to the spot to retrieve their belongings, their sleeping bags had been ripped apart and strewn across the beach. They investigated the forest area and found a wide path of torn-up vegetation and churned-up soil just inside a shrubbery border. Courtney Huggins reported seeing an odd bipedal creature near Radium Hot Springs on the Stanley Glacier Trail in May 1991. Huggins was one of six in a group walking single file with between 10 and 30 yards between them. The creature ran across the trail between the first and second hiker, who was Courtney Huggins, who said it was about six feet tall with long blonde hair. No clothing could be seen, just hair. A small dog belonging to one of the hikers ran after the creature. Then the first and second hiker, now together, heard a tree creaking as it was about to fall some 75 yards away. They could see the top of a dead burnt tree moving with the creaking sound and could hear the dog barking in the distance. All of a sudden, the tree came crashing down and the dog stopped barking. The dog's owner frantically called his dog, which came back about 15 seconds later. The group reasoned that the creature had pushed the tree over and thought it best to leave the area right away. Wojtek Terrell reported that while driving near Golden through Rogers Pass, he saw a large, hair-covered, bipedal creature on the roadside on the night of September 18, 1991. His account is as follows. All of a sudden, I saw it in the headlights, what I thought was a grizzly bear. I was going about 75 miles per hour, so I didn't see it for very long. I'm positive it was brown. I'm positive it was walking upright, well-built, but not fat, slim sort of thing, and it was traveling in the same direction, so I didn't see any facial features. Just as I was passing it, it kind of wandered off to the right, towards the woods. Mary Stressy and her friend had a frightening night while camped near Comox at Comox Lake in the summer of 1992. The lake is just outside Strathcona Provincial Park. During the night, they heard frightening sounds, which included a mournful bellowing accompanied by the sounds of an animal running back and forth and breaking branches in the nearby forest. The pair abandoned their camp for the security of their vehicle. The sounds continued intermittently all night long. Mark Howry reported that he saw a Sasquatch through his binoculars near Nelson in the Blueberry Paulson Pass in October 1992. Howry was helping friends spot deer. The creature was half as high as the 17-foot trees. He knew it had to be a Sasquatch because it was walking on two legs and covered too much ground. It was black and walked with its arms swinging. Hunters believe they saw a Sasquatch near Castlegar in the Christina Lake area during October 1992. They watched the creature through binoculars. It was running bare naked through three feet of snow, they said. It ran effortlessly without snowshoes. They described it as being black and a minimum of eight feet tall. One of the men remarked, I'll have a mystery in my mind for the rest of my life. K.R. Tubbs reported seeing an unusual creature while driving near Fort Nelson in the Laird Hot Springs Provincial Park in the fall of 1992. He saw what he thought was a person on the right side of the road, 
and wondered what someone would be doing out there in the middle of nowhere. As Tubbs got closer to the oddity, he could see that it was very tall, perhaps over seven feet, very wide at the shoulders, and it was all the same color, a brownish-gray with a lighter tone on the outside. It appeared to be pulling on tree branches on the hillside next to the road. When Tubbs got to within half-mile of the creature, it turned around and walked on two legs across the road where there was a steep cliff. The creature simply went over the edge. Tubbs stopped and inspected where the creature had been first seen and saw that the snow was all disturbed in one place. He could not see any definite footprints. He went to the other side of the road and saw that the snow was disturbed down to where the drop-off hit the slope on the bottom land, which had many alders and a stream. He said that the trail looked like brooms had swept a path, although there had been deep impressions paced at about the distance of those that would have been made if a person were running. Tubbs waited for a while to see if he could again see the creature, and then heard what he said sounded like a cross between a howl and a scream in the woods below. Then, about 300 yards to his right, he saw the alders flattening like something huge was moving through them, like watching a car slowly drive through a cornfield. He said the alders had to be a couple of inches thick. Dennis Richards reported that he saw a Sasquatch near Port McNeil on Crease Island in 1992. Richards was in his boat at the time, traveling to Night Inlet. He said the creature was walking along the island beach. It stepped over some large beach logs and then disappeared into the forest. It traveled a distance of over 200 feet, all on two legs. He mentioned that the size of the logs eliminated a bear. Even if it could walk that distance on two legs, its legs would have been far too short. Thanks for listening. Become a Bigfoot Case Files member by clicking the join button below this video. Member perks include two weekly members-only videos with limited ads, monthly members-only giveaways, members-only polls, photos and status updates, and more. We hope to see you as a member soon, and thanks for all your support.